Tabernacles, that very portion of scripture that we read right here was said by the Jewish people. It was said in anticipation of the day when the Messiah would come and would present himself to Jerusalem. Now can you imagine? Can you imagine? Jesus Christ coming into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. Palm branches are spewed in the way. Symbols of victory. Symbols that you would give to a person maybe who was a champion, a conqueror. Tokens of praise. Jesus comes riding in on the back of a donkey. Now a donkey was a symbol of peace. It was a symbol of lowliness. Jesus Christ rides into Jerusalem on the back of this donkey. Can you imagine what the Romans must have thought as they stood as onlookers? I would imagine they probably snickered. <laughs> You're kidding me. This is your king? King on the back of a donkey? He don't look like no king to me. Oh, but he is. The Bible tells us that these words will once again be proclaimed. Did you know that? Take your Bible and turn with me back to Matthew chapter 23 and verse 39. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 39. Listen to what it says in Matthew 23 and verse 39. It says, For I say unto you, this is the Lord speaking to us, Ye shall not see me henceforth, till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. What is he talking about? He's talking about when he comes the second time. That's what he's talking about. That's what he's alluding to. When he comes the second time. There'll be no snickering when Jesus comes the next time. The kings of the earth will tremble in his presence when he comes the next time. They won't stand and mock and defy him. When he comes the second time, he will come as a conquering king. Take your Bible and turn them back to Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14. I want you to notice what it has to say. It says this. It says, I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken. And the houses rifled and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand. Where? Notice where it says. And his feet shall stand in that day the Mount of Olives. The very mount that he came on his first time into Jerusalem. When he presented himself as the lowly king riding on the back of a donkey. Once again this King Jesus is going to come again. He's going to come back to that very same mount again and he's going to present himself again only this time not meek and lowly he's going to present himself as a conquering king listen to what it says and the mount of olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west and there shall be a very great valley and half of the mountain shall be removed toward the south or toward the north and half toward the south quite a description of what's going to take place when Jesus comes the next time Israel, your king is coming again. Listen to what it says in Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10. When Jesus Christ came the first time, they rejected him. But I want you to know Jesus Christ is coming again. Listen to what it says, Zechariah 12 and 10. I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplications and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one that mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his, for, for his son for his firstborn what is that saying to us these Jewish people when Jesus Christ came Riding on the back of a donkey. They looked to him to be their deliverer from Roman tyranny. He came to bring deliverance from their sinful soul. They rejected him. They were responsible for having him crucified. He's saying that once again, he's going to come back again. You say, how is that possible that the Jewish people 
We'll be so blind. Look what it says, if you will, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 14. It says this, But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away with in Christ. But unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. There was a veil upon the heart of the Jewish people. They refused to believe that Jesus was who he said he was. They failed to trust him as their Lord and as their Savior. Listen, this Jesus is coming again. He came the first time to be our Savior, but he's coming again to Israel. And he's coming to the world. And the world will look upon the one, the Jews will look upon the one whom they have pierced. Only this time, they will look to him as their Savior. He will not only bring salvation, but he will bring deliverance. What is Zechariah foretelling? He is foretelling a day that the Messiah will ride triumphantly. And not on the back of a donkey, but on a white horse. He will not come as a lamb to the slaughter. He will not come as a babe in the manger. But he will come as a conquering king. He will come as the Lord of hosts. He will come as the captain of our salvation. And the world of that, of that day will be humbled by him. Take your Bible and turn with me back to the book of Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. Listen to what it says in the book of Revelation chapter 19. In Revelation chapter 19 verse 11 it says this. It's describing Jesus and his second coming. It says this, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed in a vesture, dripped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Listen to what it says in verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. <coughs> How many of you like to ride a horse? For those of you who don't like to ride a horse, I got news for you. You're going to like to ride a horse. Because one day you're going to come back as an onlooker. You're going to come back as an onlooker. And you're going to observe this tremendous battle that's about to be fought between the enemies of Christ, the nations of the world that have opposed him. Christ, according to Zechariah chapter 14, verse 2, is going to settle old accounts. He's going to come as a conquering king. He comes to Israel's defense. He comes to deliver her from her enemies who have surrounded her, wanting to wipe her off the face of the earth. Have you noticed the news lately? Have you noticed the upheaval in the Middle Eastern countries lately and how the Muslims are just literally establishing a Muslim state? Do you know what the heart and soul of a Muslim is? Hate Israel. Hate Christians. The stage is being set. I say to you this morning, church, you ought to trim your lamp and get ready. Because before that day ever happens, the second coming... He comes and he stops in the clouds. He stops in the clouds. He doesn't come to earth. And he calls out his church. But I want you to know this morning, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you will be left behind. You will be ushered in to a time called the tribulation. And during that time, there will be unimaginable suffering upon the face of the earth. But the sad thing about it is, if you sat here in this service this morning, you've heard the message of the gospel, and you've walked out the door, and the Lord comes and calls out his church. Let's just imagine this morning, we're in church when the Lord comes and calls out his church. Did you realize you're going to have some pretty good pickings? Do you know that? You say, what do you mean by that? Because these clothes, these skin, these keys, 
My billfold, or not much in it, but my billfold, it'll be all left behind for you and the Antichrist. Oh, but you say, I'll get my life right with Jesus Christ. No, you won't. You've sat here and heard the gospel and you have rejected the gospel. You'll not get your heart and life right with Jesus Christ because the Bible says God will send you strong delusion. You'll believe a lie. You were one of the privileged to live during the dispensation of grace. And you rejected grace. Jesus Christ fulfilled scripture when he came into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. Those scriptures had been given hundreds of years earlier. We just read a passage in the book of Revelation. And that passage is telling us that Jesus Christ is coming back again on a white horse. He's coming as a conquering king. I ask you this morning, are you prepared for his coming? How did we become a part of this? <clears throat> Excuse me. How did we become a part of this? Did you ever stop thinking about that? What if the Jews had received him as their savior that day? What would have happened then? Do you ever think about that? Would Jesus had to die? Yes. Why? Because we're still sinners. The Bible says in, in Revelation chapter 13 verse 4, he was slain before the foundation of the, or 13 and verse 8, he was slain, slain before the foundation of the world. It was purposed before the foundation of the world that Jesus Christ was to come and was to die on the cross for the sins of humanity. Had he not died, there would not have been forgiveness of sins. Had he not died, there would have never been salvation for the soul of man. Had he not died, where well, we would still be in enmity between God and man. But what would have happened though? Had the Jews accepted him as their king? Jesus would have died. He would have been buried. He would have rose again. He would have ascended to the Father. And if you've ever read your Old Testament prophecy, the Jews would go right on in to the tribulation time. They would be ushered in to the millennium and you would have never heard of the church. But today, as believers in Jesus Christ, we have been grafted into that royal vine because of the work of Jesus Christ. He's coming back again. He's going to be our king. I hope you're looking for him. I asked you a question this morning. Would you crown him? Do you crown him as your king? He isn't going to be overlooked. When he comes again, he'll either be Jesus your savior or he'll be Jesus your judge. And the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. We just read to begin the message with in Revelation chapter 7. How that great assembly in heaven of saints and heavens, people gather before his throne. And they bow before him. And they worship him. They will worship him as the redeemed of the Lord. But do you realize. As a lost person. He'll be your king too. You rejected him all this life. But in that day. You will bow before him. And you will acknowledge. To the glory of God the Father. That Jesus Christ. Is the son of God. Is he your king this morning? Are you ready for him to come? The next great event that we're looking for, and I'll tell you what, folks, based on what we're seeing today in these Muslim nations in the Middle East today, the church better pick up their head and pay attention and look. The Lord could come at any moment. The stage is set for the man of sin to come on the scene as never before. 
If your heart's not right with the Lord today, then get it right with the Lord. Let's bow our heads and hearts in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. And we pray, Father, that this word might have found a lodging place in each of our hearts. And should there be one here, Father, or many here, who's never ever trusted you, who's never made peace with you, Father, I pray that you'll burden that heart. Should there be those here this morning, Father, that their, their life is not what it ought to be. They're a believer, but their life is not what it ought to be. I pray, Father, that they will get their life what it should be. We pray that you have your will and way in this invitation. For we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Even the way